Today we have a crazy story of revenge against someone who they thought was their friend. We'll get into that in a bit, but first, I'm proud of what I did to Lauren. My girlfriend of years thought it would be a good idea to take me along for a joyride and treat me as she pleased. Well, I guess she thought wrong. For as long as I breathed, I'd made up my mind to get back at her for the terrible way she had made me feel and the joy ride she took me on. I would never let her off the hook or let her have her way in whatsoever way after what she had made me go through. My name is Adams and that of my ex-fiance now is Lauren. Lauren was the love of my life right from the very moment I set my sights on her, which was way back in high school. Lauren and I met just by mere coincidence during one of our joint classes back then, which was Spanish, I think. Picking at least one language was a prerequisite for students back then, and although it proved to be quite a difficult hurdle to cross, and also discourage students from registering then or even getting the proper motivation to study them properly, there was still a very small minority of students that excelled greatly in that respect. Lauren was one of them. She had been the top student across all levels of academia in the Spanish department. Back then we were just in our third year and I had just decided on what language I would select to complete my subject combination for the term. Upon serious deliberation and much consideration, I had decided to opt for the Spanish class, as I would heard that it was one of the easiest compared to the other languages which were German, Chinese, Portuguese, among others. I registered for the course and got to the classes the very next day. To my greatest surprise, when I got into the class the next day, she immediately caught my gaze. I just kept on staring at her until I went to find a place to sit. She was simply divine. Her long blonde hair, her beautiful smile, and her defining dimple coupled with her deep blue eyes. It felt like I was in a dream. Not to sound overly excessive, but she was the epitome of beauty as I had never seen someone like her in my entire time of existence. Once the Spanish teacher got into the class, she readily prompted the class to stand up and welcome the teacher into the class in Spanish. And that was when I finally got to hear her talk. Her voice was almost definitely angelic, as I'd already began to love it. As far back as my memory tracks, I don't think I can remember listening to the teacher speak for the first three classes I had attended. My focus was on Lauren and Lauren alone. It was after the fourth class the following week that the information passed around about our upcoming test and we were to prepare properly. I knew I was in a bit of a pinch at this time because I had not the slightest idea as to what exactly it was that was being taught to us and before I had realized, the stipulated date for the test was drawing closer and closer with each passing day. I knew I was in a serious pinch and so the next thing I did was to ask around as to who was the most well versed in the activities we had been doing in class right from the day one, and every person I asked directed me straight to Lauren as at the time I had no idea, but she was the number one student in the Spanish class for two sessions in a row. Immediately I got this information. I had nothing holding me back again as I set out to converse with her on matters regarding the classes and also the upcoming tests. I had searched the entirety of the school's building down to the faculty building in search of Lauren and I still could not find her. This exact moment I truly needed to see her and she was nowhere to be found. I hadn't given up, I made up my mind to find her wherever she was. As I approached the school's lacrosse field, I checked the audience stand one last time as the final place I would search for the day as I was already on the verge of giving up. And there she was, right there on the stand, watching the lacrosse players intensely. She looked stunning. I just stood there for a minute as I tried to admire her from afar, not until I realized that I was in serious need of her help. I quickly went up to the stand and sat down beside her. I introduced myself and asked whether or not she was free at the time, as I was in need of her assistance. She gracefully smiled at me as she asked what I needed help with. I explained to her that I had not the slightest clue as to what it was we were doing, relative to the Spanish classes we've been having. She agreed as she accepted to tutor me for the little time we had left to the test. We had our first conversation right there on the audience stand and we were there for close to two hours as it seemed to me at that moment that that particular moment should not come to an end at all. But alas, it was the end of the school period and it was time for us to head home. I was pained as I wanted more time with her but I couldn't say anything. While we were on our way outside the school gates, she asked if I was going to be busy after school and that she was willing to continue or pick up right from where we left off. I was surprised. She admitted that she enjoyed my company and that she would like to continue with the tutoring, that is, if I was going to be free. 
seeming like a dream at the time and at the particular moment, I turned her down initially and replied to her, saying that I was going to be busy at home helping my parents with something I could not yet have thought up on the spot, and then she asked again, almost making it seem to confirm again from my end if that was what I truly wanted. I was in a state of utter surprise. Who could have guessed the very girl that caught my eye the very first day I got to school back then would be showing signs of interest in me? I mean, at the time, I really thought so lowly of myself that I could never even have imagined myself and Lauren engaging in a proper conversation. After she asked again, I just responded by telling her that I could probably make up some spare time, maybe like an hour or two, for her tutoring. We exchanged contact information on the spot, and she assured me that she would drop a message for me, reminding me about our plans. I felt butterflies in my chest, literally. I went home feeling giddy as I'd already began planning every single bit of activity or action I was going to take in a few hours. Putting a pin to our initial meeting, we met up a few hours later with myself already dressed up, like I was heading to a party or something. Upon arrival, I'd thought I was overdressed for something as simple as a tutorial from a classmate of mine, but after seeing Lauren, I just knew she would reciprocate the energy I was giving off, for she too was even more overdressed than I was. I burst out laughing as we both knew right then and there that we were not going to have the tutorial as planned, but rather we were going on a date. It seemed weird because thinking back now, I guess you could say she made the initiating move? We had a very deep, long, and intense talk that evening as we visited a lot of places. Apparently after conversing with Lauren for a while, I found out that she too found me interesting from the very first day we met, and she was planning on approaching me too, but she was on her own path, too scared of getting rejected, and also coming off as too desperate. I tried to tell her about how I also felt and how I also thought I would never have the chance to even hold a proper conversation with her. We both laughed our previous situation off. That was basically the highlight of our evening and apparently our first date that very day. I walked her all the way back to her home, as traditionally expected of me I guess, and then I went back home myself. After our supposed first date that evening, I guess you could say we became official in some way but I had to make sure so I would not begin a one-sided crusade for love on my own. This was almost a month after we had our first date. We had just finished a class and it was time for recess. I went toward her seat and we got talking as usual. Then I asked her right then and there if she would do me the honors of being my girlfriend. I guess this question came as a total shock to her, not in the sense that she didn't expect it, but in the sense that she obviously did not expect me to drop the questions on her right then and there in the class. She said yes immediately though, and that was the start of our relationship. We dated for over three years which went on even after we both had graduated and left high school and had even gotten accepted into college of our choice at 22. Everything seemed to be working out well for us back then, as we were still both pursuing the course of our dreams, all while our relationship still being as strong as ever. But alas, having more than enough fortune coming our way would sooner or later resort to at least one misfortune. But in this case, I wouldn't call this a misfortune on my own end, but on Lauren's end. This was one week prior to our second semester's examination for the second session we had spent in school, and I'd been trying to reach out to Lauren, mainly because I hadn't heard from her for nearly three days, I think, and her line had not been reachable all that time. I kind of became worried, and as I tried to contact some of her friends that I knew, they also weren't picking up. And then I went to the social media handle of a very close friend of mine, and I saw that he was out with his friends and they were out clubbing. I thought it was nice, since he had initially sent me an invite which I had to turn down, mainly because I had exams coming up, and I would prefer it if I'd maintained prime focus for the exams ahead. Before I left his status, I saw her. Lauren was there at the party, and apparently she'd become everyone's party partner. I didn't even know how to feel at the time, and I immediately went over to the club as it was just a stone throws from the school's premises. When I got there, I saw her riding a whole different guy than the one I saw in the video. My mind just went blank, and when she saw me she had this look of shame on her face. And it was really one of those moments she had wished the ground would just open up and swallow her whole. I immediately left the club and hailed a cab to take me back into school, as she tried to chase after me. I ignored her totally and went back to my dorms. 
I chose not to speak to her for quite a while after that, and when I finally was ready to talk, what she told me even made it seem like I barely knew her after all these years of dating. She told me that she was bored and this was something she usually did whenever she wanted to let out some stress and seeing that the examinations were knocking at the door. I foolishly thought of things from her own perspective and came to the conclusion to forgive her at the time. Looking back now, I can see what a foolish idea that was because apparently after that heated period of examinations, another event had happened again which made me realize at the time that no matter how many times I tried to make things work out between Lauren and I, she had developed an addictive habit, one that she was not ready to admit she had and one that she was also not willing to stop. Even in one situation where I would confronted her, she retaliated and tried to take on the defensive side to justify her actions. Truly, this felt heartbreaking as she was the first love of my life, but something had to be done and when I did try to help her, she humiliated me right there in public when we were in school and she said some things that shouldn't have been said. Obviously I was furious because most of the things that came out of her mouth were things I had told her in strict confidentiality, which were not supposed to leave the confines of our relationship and she didn't even feel the slightest shred of guilt at the time. After my classes for the day had ended, I just decided to go straight to my dorms, as I wasn't even in the mood for anything else that day. Then she approached me to apologize for her actions and the things she had said to me back then, as she tried to justify her actions by saying she was not in her right mind, and also adding that she was intoxicated at the time. At this point, all of these did not come to me as a shock or a surprise. All I had on my mind back then was to just be left alone and seeing as she wasn't ready to let me go, even after exhibiting behaviors I had never thought possible on her end, or even saying things I'd never thought she would, initially I'd made up my mind to end things right then and there, but an amazing plan just popped up in my mind out of nowhere. I was skeptical at first as to whether or not I should go ahead with the intrusive thought I just had right then and there, and then I thought about what she had done to our relationship and also how she had made me feel these past months. And I thought to myself that this was the perfect opportunity that had come my way, for me to not in the least get back at her, after which she had asked for forgiveness for myself. I just decided to play along and act the role of what she wanted me to be at that time. In fact, I'd played out my role so much so, that she had begun to see how serious I was with her, and this was when I had began to see some signs of changes in her. Apparently she had thought that this would be the perfect time for her to change her ways, as it was already seeming like our college life was almost at its end. Lauren had told me prior to now about her plans to live her life when she had finally left college. This would be of course after she had gotten a job to sustain her in the least, to which I was also in support of back then. Seeing as I was still playing the role of a serious partner to her, I decided at the time to make sure that she would still feel the most comfortable with me. And then soon after, we were done with college and we had bagged our degrees, I decided to propose to her. After she was giving me obvious hints that she was ready to be with me for real and for good. But I wasn't in it for all that, I just wanted to get back at her where she would feel it the most. And so, after proposing to her, we broke the news to our friends, family and loved ones. And in less than 6 months after moving in together and living together for all that time, we had finally set a date for the wedding. At this point it was already seeing like we were really going to get married and the date of our wedding was supposed to be on a Saturday but prior to that I'd already booked a flight as I was planning on leaving for Germany that very day as I was preparing for my master's degree over there. And on the supposed day of our wedding I called her about an hour before the church session and I bid her my final farewell as I hung up the phone. This was while I was already at the airport ready to leave. And that was the last I ever heard of and from Lauren. I didn't even bother to check in on her as I knew the situation would not look so good on my end, seeing as I left her on our wedding day without a word as to why. And I don't regret it one bit. I guess you could say I was a bit wrong for playing with her the way I did, but I'm proud of what I did. So obviously OP left Lauren hanging there, but my question is, did they invite more of their family also? Like, did they leave not just her, but a lot of other people hanging too? I'm curious about that. That said, our next story is my number one antagonist, Robert. My name is Damian Myers, and here is my story and how I savored and enjoyed my sweet revenge against my then very good friend, Robert Hayes. 
Robert and I have been really close friends. Infants. One could easily mistake us for brothers as we went way back. Even as far as even high school. In my opinion, Robert was the most ideal person one could have asked for as a friend, as he was everything and more. The only problem I had with and about Robert was that he was just not good at handling good and proper competition, especially in cases or situations where it had seemed like he was not going to come out victorious. This was a bad habit that had brought out a new side to Robert I'd never seen before, but still with this, I had no issue with whatever it was that Robert had done, as long as it doesn't affect our friendship in any way at all. But relative to the build-up to two different and separate events that had happened, my idea and demeanor towards Robert would forever be changed. The first situation would be back then in high school, where we both were in the genesis of our friendship basically. It was just your average day at school, Robert and I attended the same high school, as for one at this time. Both our parents' houses were located adjacent to each other coincidentally, which just even brought us closer together. And secondly, seeing as both our parents had just moved into the area, both from entirely different locations, this was like a new school experience for the both of us and all. First day of school, which was supposed to be a dreadful phenomenon for most new students while getting into a new school, was nothing of the sorts for either myself or Robert, as in this case we had the upper hand of having each other to get through the tough challenge of getting through the entire school day. Basically, after the conclusion of the entire first half of the day, when Robert and I had met up for lunch in the cafeteria, and while we were discussing with each other, all while trying to get each other all caught up with the daily activities that had been going on in the other person's day so far, then there she was, the most beautiful girl I'd ever set my eyes on at the time. I tried so desperately to take my eyes off of her, all to no avail, as she seemed like an angel at the time. And all I could do was just stare and just be amazed as to how I could just so happen to come across such a beauty. Robert, on the other hand, had showed one of the most nonchalant reactions I'd ever seen. At the time, I even began asking him different questions regarding his sexuality, as I wondered why his reaction to her was just as plain as can be, and he told me then that he just didn't find her as attractive as I did apparently, and he didn't want to stop me from admiring and appreciating her and all. I was still not ready to even go in depth as to why he was behaving the way he was, but that wasn't what was important to me at the time, as the only thing that went through my mind at the time, as silly as it may sound, was just myself imagining myself alongside the beautiful girl I'd just laid my eyes on, together. As I imagined how our future would be together, Robert tried to knock me out of my delusional state, as he thought I was already being silly at this point. When I'd come back to reality, I just decided to take my chances and I tried to approach her at the time, seeing as I had nothing to lose at this point at all. I asked Robert to wish me luck, as it would be very much needed at this point. I shyly approached her as my heart began to beat fast, so much so that it seemed like it was almost beating out of my chest. I approached her and introduced myself. I thought then that I would most definitely be turned down by her, as what was on my mind at the time I was going towards her was not that she would actually pay me any mind. However, to my greatest surprise, she was one of the nicest persons I have ever met. She had this calming voice that, when I heard it, it really made me calm and composed enough to engage in a proper enough conversation. This was the first time I'd ever engaged a girl that I fancied in an actual conversation, as most conversations and experiences I had with most girls were usually all in my head, as I'd never for once summoned up the courage to actually speak with them and when I did, nothing meaningful usually came out of my mouth. This was kind of like a turning point in my life, because at this point I had this feeling and this strong surge of confidence to myself, and I think Robert noticed too as there were some instances where I decided to widen up my already very little social circle a little bit, and I decided to go on some social outings with Esther. Esther was the name of the girl I'd approached back then in school. We became close friends real quick. I didn't want to rush things between the both of us by quickly jumping into a relationship. I wanted to save her every bit of knowing her, which would most definitely result in a relationship scenario between the both of us. After the social outing between Esther and myself, I began noticing some changes in Robert's behavior towards me. At the time, I most definitely did not know that what Robert was feeling at the time was jealousy, and that he too had wanted to be a part of things or activities I was doing at the time. 
Unknowing to me, Robert has apparently been holding it against me for one, according to him, casting his aside the moment I found and got a girl I was interested in, which in my defense was most definitely not my fault, and secondly, totally ignoring him, my best friend at the time, who I was the most closest with and also in my defense, I actually tried to talk with him on several occasions about joining us, or even better, still letting the both of us hang out as usual. That moment when I knew that he most definitely did not take this lightly was when he confronted me one eventful day about things and things got very heated that evening, which led to the both of us having a very serious fight. In fact, that was the very first fight the both of us had gotten into since the first day I knew Robert. We went a few weeks without speaking to each other and I'd initially wanted to be the bigger person and just put the past behind us and bury the hatchet between the both of us but I guess he wasn't prepared for that, as he had other plans. Seeing as the both of us were very much close, so much so, in fact, that Robert knew a lot about me and my personal life, and he also knew much about the other girls I'd been trying to have my way with back then, which was way before I even met Esther, as we were seriously making serious attempts at being promiscuous. And using all the knowledge he had of me, he approached Esther in army absence and tried to put altered information about me in her head. I knew this because, as I met up with Esther later that evening, she herself confronted me about the things she had heard from the horse's mouth, and she wanted clarity right then and there, on the spot. I told her everything about how Robert and I were before I met her, and I assured her that I'd put all those behaviors way behind me, and he was looking to get into something serious with her. After clearing things up with her, I got so mad, mainly because of how he was just about to sabotage everything I had going on with Esther over a little fight, and I was literally about to head out and have a showdown with him regarding this matter, but everything I had this thought, Esther would always calm me down and remind me that it wasn't worth it, to which I would just let whatever it was I was feeling back then go. To cut our long story short, Robert and I cut ties immediately after that day. We basically didn't see each other again until later on. This was just a few years after graduating college, I had just completed my collecting my college degree, and I just began my job search. Esther and I were still together, and we were still together after all these years. We had just moved in with each other right after graduating from college, and Esther and I were just getting our job search on so as to get a stable income for our personal sustenance. And as all luck in the world, and as fate would have it, I got a job offer from one of the prestigious financial companies I had doubts about applying to for a higher position than I'd applied for, and the company was willing to offer me a higher promotion to become the head of a whole department. I was amazed as I jumped immediately at the offer. It had seemed like a dream come true at this time, as this was one of the moments Esther and myself were at our all-time low. There were bills that were already way past their due date, and this job offer just so happened to have come at the right time. It was only after resuming the work the next week that I knew that Robert was also an employee at the company. It was odd, having not seen someone who was once your best friend for over five years, and then all of a sudden, there he was. Apparently in the company, I was offered an even higher position in the company than he was, but upon arrival and encounter, we did not exchange a single word, we just exchanged stares at each other and that was it. Many weeks passed on the job, even leading to months where we were passing by each other every day at work. I'd already made up my mind not to pay him any mind, as I didn't want to be reminded of what he had done to fully end our then friendship, but there was something he had done that turned the tide of things. Apparently, I was up for a promotion after being tasked with a very peculiar job by my direct supervisor, and being the senior one over Robert at the workplace, I naturally employed his services in helping completing the job faster. So I was tasked with the proper management of one of the company's top investors, Henderson Motors, and the deadline was right around the corner. It had seemed like I would not have met the deadline if I had not employed the services of another, but I just decided to make it Robert in a last ditch attempt at still trying to see if we could still be friends and all, and to my greatest surprise, he did what I had not expected from him. He tried to sabotage the work by inputting false and altered information in my work report. I had no idea at the time, and right before presenting, I was just so lucky that I had my very own work report, which I'd prepared in case of an emergency which just so happened to be right then during my presentation. 
I had no idea who it was that altered the work report, but I paid it no mind as to why someone would do this. A few weeks had passed right after my presentation, and as promised, the company had offered me the head of the department promotion that was promised before firing me. I literally was the happiest man that day. It wasn't until later on that I got to find out who it was that tried to sabotage my promotion, and when I found out that it was Robert, I'd already made up my mind to use my newly obtained position to get right back at him for this, and for years ago back in high school. I summoned him into my office the very next day. It was a bright Tuesday morning and as the early morning sun streamed through the windows of the corner office, giving everything a warm golden glow, I sat at the large mahogany desk, leather chair creaking slightly as I leaned back. On the walls hung awards and newspaper clippings detailing my meteoric rise to success. It was a corner office fitting for the head of department of one of the hottest financial companies in the industry. I had it all. Some might say I was living the dream. And yet, one thing was missing. One loose end that needed tying up before I could truly move forward. The sound of approaching footsteps made me sit up straight. Right on time, I adjusted my tie and ran a hand over my slicked back hair as my visitor stepped through the open door. Good morning, Robert, I said with a congenial smile. Please, have a seat. Robert Hayes regarded me warily as he sank into the chair across from me. I could tell he was nervous about being called into the head of department's office like this. Good. I wanted him off balance for this conversation, as this has been what I'd been waiting for for quite a long time. I appreciate you taking the time to meet with me, I continued smoothly. I wanted to discuss your future here at the company. Robert fidgeted in his seat. Oh, did I do something wrong? No, no, I said, waving a hand. In fact, your work has been satisfactory. But I'm afraid we'll be letting you go today. Your position is being eliminated. Shock registered on his face. What? But why? It's nothing personal. Just business needs changing. However, I don't want you to worry. You'll receive a generous severance package. I slid a document across the desk. Just sign this release form and... Wait a minute, Robert said sharply. I deserve more of an explanation than that. I've worked my butt off for this company. I raised an eyebrow. Careful with the attitude, Robert. You're still an employee here and I'm still your superior. We locked eyes in a silent battle of wills before Robert dropped his gaze. Sorry, it's just, this seems very sudden. He looked back at me. At least tell me the real reason I'm being let go. I studied him for a long moment. Perhaps he did deserve the truth. Very well. I've decided to remove you because of what happened a few months ago when we both worked on my promotional job. Confusion crossed his face. He said a few months ago? I say, does the Henderson account ring any bells? Robert paled. He said, you know about that? I do. I know you sabotaged the project and made it look like I was responsible. Try to sabotage my promotion. My voice hardened. You tried to steal what was rightfully mine. A promotion? My reputation? That's, that's crazy, Robert sputtered. I didn't sabotage anything. I leaned forward. I suspected it was you for a long time, but I recently confirmed it. Reaching into my desk drawer, I retrieved an old letter and tossed it in front of him. I still have connections in almost every corner of this company. They found that when they were cleaning out storage. Robert stared at the letter, his face ashen. He didn't have to read it. He knew what it contained. Proof of his deception in black and white. I decided to bide my time with this, I continued. Wait for the right moment to seek justice. And what better justice than to fire you? just like you did to me back then. I leaned back, folding my hands behind my head. Karma comes knocking eventually, doesn't it? I-, I can explain, Robert stammered. Save it. I'd start cleaning out your desk if I were you. Robert sat there a moment, stunned. Then his shoulders slumped in defeat. He knew he was caught and there was no talking his way out of it. You're right. What I did to you was wrong, he said quietly. Looking up at me with resignation, he took the severance form and signed it. Then he silently got up and left the office. I watched him go, a mix of emotions swirling through me. Satisfaction at finally proving his deception. Disappointment that he offered no real apology. But most of all, a sense of closure. The past was finally laid to rest. Where Robert had sought to undermine me out of ruthless ambition, I had simply meted out justice. Now I could move on. The score settled. Leaning back again, I smiled. The morning sun felt a little brighter. Yes, karma does have a way of coming full circle. 
even if it takes a while, and patience in the end, often brings the sweetest revenge of all. I mean, OP might classify this as revenge, and maybe picking and choosing to find the right time to do it could constitute that, but I think, honestly, in general, I think OP just did their job as the boss here. Somebody that's willing to go and sabotage another coworker probably should not keep their employment for very long. But with that being said, that's all the time we have for today. Now if you want to hear another crazy revenge story, check out that video on the left. Or if you missed my latest video, check out that video on the right. That said, I'll see you all next time with some more stories.